Hi, George here again, and what I'd like to talk to you today about is the relationship of minute ventilation, tidal volume, and respiratory rate. And as you can see on the whiteboard behind me, I've got VE, VT, and RR indicated, and VE stands for minute ventilation. You might also hear, hear it uh, called minute volume. VT is tidal volume, and RR, or sometimes abbreviated F, is respiratory rate. Now to uh, help you understand this demonstration a little bit uh, better, what I've done, and I'm going to move the board so you can see it in a sec, or the camera so you can see it in a sec, is I want to use something more practical to show you the relationship first before we do anything more on the whiteboard. So for this demonstration, I've chosen to use a pinky to represent one breath and the volume of liquid inside the pinky to represent the tidal volume of each breath. You can use other things if you want to try this at home. You could use something boring like a felt marker. I like to use other things that are more interesting to me to use other than pinky. So perhaps you might want to use snacks to represent respiratory rate like pretzels or maybe chocolate bars, but I've had a few too many chocolate bars in the last few days. My personal favorite is desserts. So desserts that you know people might make for you, or you might make yourself to represent respiratory rate and tidal volume. And last but not least, candy, like spearmint leaves, ganong spearmint leaves that you can get in Canada. They're very flavorful, very tasty. Okay, so but use whatever works for you. So I'm gonna adjust the camera now. And what you should see is this hospital table with a piece of tape on it. And I'm using this piece of tape to represent one minute in length, okay? So from here to there, let's say that is one full minute of time. So as the patient takes a breath in, that's the first breath comprising their respiratory rate. They take another breath, there's another breath right over there. Each breath contains total volume in it. Another breath, Another breath. You get the idea. They'll keep on breathing for one whole minute. And after that minute, you can kind of say within the minute, there are so many breaths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In this minute here, the patient took ten breaths. And every breath had a certain tidal volume. So if you could collectively scoop up all the volume from each breath, and measure its contents over that one minute, that would be the minute ventilation or the minute volume. So your minute volume or your minute ven ventilation is simply all the breaths for that minute and the volume each breath contained added together. So the entire volume in one minute, all right? So if you're ventilating a patient or if you're monitoring or watching, excuse me, a big close up of my glasses and nose, if you're assessing your patient spontaneously breathing or if you are working on a ventilator and you're seeing what the patient's respiratory rate is, etc., um, there's a relationship between the respiratory rate, the tidal volume, and the minute ventilation. And it looks something like this if you want to place it into a formula. So, the minute ventilation, with the entire volume the patient inhaled in one minute, is a function of the respiratory rate again and the tidal volume. So we could say VE is equal to the respiratory rate times the tidal volume. So if you happen to have a respiratory rate of 12 breaths per minute and the patient's tidal volume was 200 mils, you could say the result in ventilation then is equal to 2400 mils or 2.4 liters. Right? And if we look at that, that minute ventilation for a normal adult is kind of low because normal should be somewhere around that 5 to 7 liters in one minute. But that's how you calculate out the minute ventilation. All right? And we can also use that same formula to figure out what the tidal volume is if, perhaps, if by chance we happen to have the minute ventilation and the respiratory rate. Or 
if we were looking at what the minimum ventilation was and looked at the respiratory rate, we could get an average tidal volume for every breath the patient inhaled or is hailing, inhaling. So that would look something like this. A tidal volume would be a function of the minimum ventilation divided by the patient's respiratory rate. In ventilation, we use this sometimes to determine the average tidal volume if we're doing an RSBI, which stands for Rapid Shallow Breathing Index, on the patient uh, as a determinant for weaning or weaning leading to extubation of that patient. So we can do that in that fashion right over there. Okay. So if we wanted to know what the average tidal volume was, and let's say, for example, we had a minute ventilation of 10,000 mils, which is the same thing as 10 liters, and the patient took, uh, for easy numbers, let's say they happened to take, oh, I don't know, uh, 10 breaths, then every breath contained 1,000 mils, or one liter. Now that's pretty excessive for a tidal volume, right? But I just want to make easy numbers right over here. And we can do the same thing now to figure out the respiratory rate if we happen to have minute ventilation and tidal volume values. So the respiratory rate then is equal to the minute ventilation divided by the tidal volume. So if you happen to have a, a minute ventilation of Again, we'll use 10,000 mils or 10 liters, and you divide that by, say for example, a uh, tidal volume of 500 mils, and you can pretty much say the patient's respiratory rate is equal to 20 breaths per minute. Okay? So every breath had roughly 500 mils, 500 times 20 is 10,000 mils or one liter. So you can use this formula to calculate out respiratory rate if you happen to know the minute ventilation and the tidal volume, or to calculate out tidal volume if you knew the minute ventilation and the respiratory rate, or you can calculate out minute ventilation by having the values of respiratory rate and tidal volume. Okay. But let's see also how this relationship works without numbers. Okay, let's say for example, let's make this, let's do this as a little flow diagram right over here, minute ventilation, respiratory rate, and tidal volume in the relationship with each of these. So for example, let's say for, let's say for, for example that your patient has a certain minute ventilation and the minute ventilation remains unchanged and we'll use that kind of arrow, double-ended arrow to indicate that it's unchanged. So if the minute ventilation remains unchanged, but you notice that the patient's respiratory rate has increased, what has to happen to tidal volume then for that to essentially occur? So in this situation, we'd say if the minute ventilation stays the same and respiratory rate increases, then there has to be a corresponding drop in the tidal volume of the patient for that minute ventilation to stay stable or consistent. Okay? That's the relationship we're kind of focusing on right now. Likewise, we can also say, if the minute ventilation has gone up while the respiratory rate stayed the same, you could say now, in order for that minute ventilation to go up, the only way it could go up if the respiratory rate was constant is if the tidal volume increased. That's the only way it could go, go up. We'll do another one. The minute ventilation stays the same, tidal volume um, drops, the minute ventilation stays the same while the tidal volume decreases what has to happen to respiratory rate, it has to increase in order to maintain the same minute ventilation. And that kind of makes sense and it also is very familiar to the first situation that we covered. Lastly. If the respiratory rate goes up and tidal volume goes up, you should see a corresponding increase in the minute the ventilation. If the respiratory rate drops 
and the tidal volume also drops, you'll see now a drop in the minute ventilation. So it's clinically important to understand at the bedside whether it's a ventilated patient in an intensive care unit, operating room, post-op recovery room, or emergency room, wherever it is that you're doing your assessment on a ventilated patient, or if you're doing the exact same assessment and it's on a patient that is not being ventilated but is under your care, it's important to understand without having numbers the relationship between these ventilation dynamics. Okay? If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, if you have a chance, subscribe to my channel. and. Uh, We'll be bringing you another ventilation dynamic video shortly. Have a great day.